Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. I'm coming at you from Las Vegas, Nevada. We are at the NSSF SHOT Show, and I am here with one of my dearest friends, Ms. Morgan Mills. Oh, hello. You're one of my dearest friends. Oh, I was just, I was telling my husband last night, like, I absolutely love you. Like, every time I go somewhere, you are seriously, like, a bright shining star because number one, like your vibe, you have the best energy. You're so outgoing and energetic and just, you light up a room, like literally light up a room well, and you. you are so nice to everyone. Thank you. See me on day four of SHOT Show and we'll see if I'm still like that. A bright shining light. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You'd be tired. <laughs> but I do respect you and the fact that you are rocking your business suit. Thank you. In sneakers. You know, after so many SHOT Shows, this is my ninth one. And I remember the first year I wore steep heels Ooh, on day one. Oh, no. But, you know, a girl's got to learn. And especially <laughs> me, I learn the hard way most time. So, um, yeah, I every year it's just, like, gotten more sensible. I've matured. I've learned. Yeah. You know, I've got shot show hacks of things to do and not to do. Yeah. And then I saw um, Haley Bieber, Justin Bieber's wife, in a suit and, like, street sneakers. And I was like, there's no way on God's green earth I can pull that off but you bet your bottom dollar I'm going to try <laughs> <laughs> because that looks really comfortable. So we got the suit and, and the sneakers. <laughs> so my biggest shot show hack is I still wear heels cause I'm so short. If I don't all of my pants <laughs> literally rub the ground and that's not a good thing in Vegas. Yeah. So what, <laughs> what I do is I will commute those Vegas blocks in flip-flops yes and I slip them in my handbag I roll I roll in flip-flops and then when I get to my occasion if I need to wear heels I throw those things on um and then then it, it's it's called balance that's brilliant I feel like we could do a whole podcast on shot show hacks yeah dry I, shampoo dry shampoo when you get to your hotel room immediately lift those feet up put them on the headboard yeah keep from your feet swelling mm -hmm. i know i put on my cowboy boots this morning and i'm like oh those are a little tight <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah learning to like gauge your sock thickness on how swollen your feet are <laughs> either we're learning and we're beating this thing it's sh called shot show or we're just turning into old women <laughs> i'm not sure i think it's a combination of both I think it's a combination of both. Hey, it's, listen, I'm all right with it. So you're like blinding me right now. I mean, you got to know like that rock you're wearing. Oh my gosh. It is a sparkly, sparkly thing. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I am engaged. Yeah. And you, you met your soon to be husband at SHOT Show eight years ago. We met actually in Nashville. We, um decided we liked each other we were oh more, okay. we decided yeah, we were more bit. than friends um in las vegas at a pie gal table after a couple days of shot show yeah but we're from the same hometown basically in Which north is carolina so random yeah and then we met um through the in, through the industry yeah. he opened nashville armory um the first five-star shooting range in nashville and he's been in this industry for, forever forever i mean he started when he was a teenager in you know military and police supply mm -hmm. you know just he he his love for the second amendment and uh firearms is and, and history yeah he's so smart um so he currently uh works for century mm -hmm. and canic firearms mm -hmm. andrew over there and yeah. we've been together um 
seven and a half, eight years. Yeah. What I love about Andrew is he's like the team boyfriend when we travel. <laughs> and that is a thing. Like now I have a team husband, so I really appreciate this. But I used to love having Andrew around because he was the team boyfriend that if anybody needed a boyfriend run or errand or anything, he was that guy or is that guy. That is so gracious of like, yeah, I'll go get your girl's coffee. Yeah. Morgan, I found your eyelash over here. <laughs> Stuck to my arm. Stuck to my- <laughs> How did it get there? <laughs> Fact. <laughs> the eyelashes end up in some weird places. Uh, he's a great team boyfriend. And um, he is. I'm really thankful that you guys are, are taking this next step. And it's going to be you. awesome. Thank you. And I'm really thankful for... Yogi, I know we're adding to our pack. That's right. Our wolf pack is expanding, which I think is great because knowing you, I've known you for so many years. And then, you know, just knowing myself, learning more about myself, we are so committed to our careers and, and work. And we've always put, um, our personal lives more on the back burner. Big time. So I think this is another example of just growing and maturing and coming into our own is, um, making time to have those relationships and invest in those relationships. Yeah. And um, the thing we were scared of that it was going to like take away from our careers. It's so funny because as I watch everything unfold now, I'm like, that was such a lie. Yeah. Like they've added so much to our, our lives and our businesses. Well, and I think that goes with a lot of philosophies. Like if you, you're a Christian. Yes. And in the Christian faith, you know, and, and so much of what's happened, I think, in the world today is it's it's devalued marriage. Mm. It's devalued family. Yeah. And it's made a lot of women, myself included, feel like you can't have it all. Like if you get married or have children, you compromise career yes. or um, not that I'm having kids. So let me just put that out there right now. There's <laughs> lots of kids out there that need love. and I don't need to contribute to that population. But um but just the value of marriage and, and the value of a vow and, and making that commitment and how, it, you know, it really is actually a stronghold for you to grow and expand in life and, and cultivate a better purpose than, than before. So I, I so love true. that about it. And I, I think that's something that's often overlooked. Um, when I met my husband, I told him after two weeks, I was like, look, I prayed for you. Mm. And God sent you to me, and so this is this is happening. And I'm sure he, I'm sure. If, I mean, if what <laughs> man would not freak out about that? <laughs> Stage five clinger. I gotta go. No, I'm worse than five. I was like a ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was bad. Uh, but no, it is it is a thing, and it's so nice to have support. I mean, he's behind the scenes right now, running all the video cameras for the podcast and dumping footage and voting for me in the Gundies and doing all the stuff for me. It's crazy. It's good. Which, by the way, let's pause and let's just do a PSA. Everyone, wherever you are right now, if this is coming out before. It'll be after. Oh, man, Darn I was going to do a PSA for everyone vote to for vote me. for Christy. She has been nominated yeah. for a Gundy Award. Yeah, Top Outdoorsman. Top Outdoorsman. Awesome, Who yeah. else is in that category? A bunch of people. A bunch of yeah. people. Uh, it's a pretty extensive list. I don't know much about the Gundys, but we are going this year. I know, because you're going to drive a tank. We're gonna. That's why I want to go. That's the only reason you want to go, because it's awesome. I heard they're kangaroos, and I can drive a tank. That's two things in life that we need to check off that list. What more do you need exactly. in life? Exactly. Well, <laughs> you have done it all. Like, literally, I mean, you're you're an incredible musician. You live in Nashville, and your singing career is... It's huge. It's like a, you're a big deal. I had someone the other day, I'm verified on Instagram. So that makes me look way more important than yeah, I am. Yeah, they won't verify me. Let's just put that out there right now. I have tried. I've gotten that blue check mark and I had it. I had a TV show at one point um, and I got it then. And, um, you know, so people follow me. They're like, I don't know what this chick does because she does so much, but I'm going to follow her. I had somebody in my DMs yesterday, bless his soul. I was, it made me laugh. He was like, I don't mean to be rude, but like, what do you do? (laughs) And I laughed heartily. I said, my, my man, my dude, I said, that is a valid question. I do a lot of things. And I'm not even (laughs) sure what you do. We had this same conversation because what you do is, um, it is such a foreign world to me. 
Yeah. Explain to our listeners and viewers what you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it is so complex. I started out uh, in music, singing, and songwriting, and that I still do that. Um, I had a record executive that um, is a good friend of mine in Nashville, and she once, I, I didn't ask her, she just randomly said it one day, she says, you know what you are? You're a creative. And I loved that, and I didn't understand that, and I, I sat with that a minute, but it's really helped me define what I do. I used to be self-conscious because I was like, you know, oh, I'm in this lane, and I'm in this lane, and this lane, and I'm I'm just kind of everywhere, and, and I'm a little, like, uh, what is it called? Um, master of none. What's that saying? Oh, jack yeah. Of, jack, jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. It made me feel self-conscious, kind of um, like that. But hold then on, I, I, I just want to, hold on, I just want to make sure I press record on that thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You never know. I get paranoid sometimes. I don't blame you. <laughs> you can't trust me in the morning. <laughs> me it's shot show. Girlfriend. I haven't had coffee yet. <laughs> but yeah, so I've just taken that word and I realized everything that I do, um, you know, whether it's creating content on social media for myself, yeah. for other companies, growing their social media, creating stories um, around just a, a social media piece, a piece for television. Um, everything that I do, whether it's writing, producing, it, it's very creative and I'm creating and I'm a storyteller for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know, when it, if I'm telling a, a story on a, on TV, if I'm hosting and telling a story, if I'm songwriting and telling a story. Um, so that's kind of the common thread through everything that I do and hosting. I picked up, a, a it's been five or six years now. It started in outdoor television, just guest hosting. Yeah. And it's grown. I had my own TV show on location where I combined both worlds, all the worlds that I love, yeah. which was, which is country music and country, um, the country lifestyle and the two a community and hunting and the outdoors. Yeah. Cause because you're also an NRA pistol instructor. I am. Yeah. I'm an NRA pistol, uh, and shotgun instructor. I have that certification. I don't, um, teach, anymore but I love it yeah. I miss it yeah I go to the range with friends all the time and I barely even shoot because I'm helping and teaching yeah and and I just I love that part of it and I, that's I think it's really important that we have that crossover in cultures from I mean a lot of us think of country music as being really pro 2a and I think it can be mm -hmm. but I also think that there's been a little shift away from second amendment support in that in that category or mm -hmm. genre of music and yeah. having somebody like yourself in there as a stronghold for the 2A, I think gives our community, number one, a lot of diversity, but it also helps, you know, educate people on the importance of it that, you know, maybe, maybe you encounter people just because it's country music doesn't mean it's Republican, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. I mean, the Second Amendment community, we want everybody in. That's and right. And we don't care what side of the aisle you land on. And, and you're really great at bridging that gap. Yeah, you're, thank you. And you're so right on that. Um, I grew up, you know, watching the Grand Ole Opry with my grandma and um, everyone that was in country music kind of believed one way looked one way and it's definitely diversified throughout yeah. the years in so many ways which I think is great um the problem the problem I have with what's going on now is if you know a country singer believes one way they might have a team of people or that people around don't them necessarily believe that way they don't believe that way yeah. maybe they were not um raised that way a lot of them are coming from and even if they are they're coming from having businesses in bigger cities like yeah. New York and Los Angeles. And, um, and so they're, they are the decision makers for a lot of these artists yeah. and the artists can't help it. That's yeah. their team. They've signed contracts, you know, so they have to really listen to these people. And so that's, I think uh, the biggest divide right now, yeah. what you're seeing in country music. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that the artists are getting away from their beliefs but a lot of their teams are, mm -hmm. but I think there's a resurgence. I mean, yeah. for a while and you guys can go through Instagram and look at this. I've just studied it myself and I realized like hunting photos. Yeah. No one posted any, there's so many hunters in country music and no one posted photos for years. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like, Oh, you can't do a grab and grin photo. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden people were just so sick of it. And yeah. you have artists like, 
you know, Riley Green and Lee Bryce and and um, Chase Rice. And you've got all these artists that are now like, you know what? Luke Jason Combs. Aldean, Chuck Wicks, Josh Thompson. There's so many that are now there. There's they said, you know, this is my Blake life. Shelton. <laughs> this is my life. Yeah. This is what I do. I'm not ignoring it. I'm yeah. I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to put it out there. And you, you said one that's getting more political these days. Jason Aldean and Chuck Wicks. Jason Aldean and his brother-in-law now. Yeah. You know, Chuck Wicks. But Jason and his wife, what they're doing, it's it's been really risky. Extremely I, risky. Well, for me, I'm like <laughs> applaud all the way around. But there can be some ramifications to a career, uh, which is unfortunate. I mean, that kind of... Um, Bias shouldn't be. I mean, that's that's why we live in America is to have freedom to voice an opinion. Yeah, that's why we have you know our First Amendment rights. But yeah, uh, some people don't welcome that. No, and and my opinion is you know I, I get asked it all the time because that's kind of teetering on both of my worlds when it comes to yeah. you know two A and and the uh, politics side and then country music, and I think it's absolutely great even if he believed um, opposite of what yeah. I believe, I think it's great because I think he's standing up for, he's using his rights and he's standing yeah. up and he's saying, I'm not going to let um, other people's ideals control my narrative anymore. This is my narrative. I'm standing for it. Yeah. I think it's great. He He's had a phenomenal career and he's going to continue yeah. to have a phenomenal career. He sells out all of his shows. He's won awards across the board. Yeah. Right, the top of the awards. He's got a mega, 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 mega mansion, you know, in in Nashville, outside of Nashville. He's got a great family, wonderful family, bunch of kids. Yeah. Um, I, I, well, he's got a jacked up truck. <laughs> Probably many of them. He's he's got his health. Like he is doing so well for himself. Yeah. If he decided tomorrow, I don't even want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to. Yeah. But, um, so in my opinion, the fact that he's, he's got a little bit of security where he's yeah. able to speak his mind, but still, even with that, a lot of people, um, that I've known are legends, mm -hmm. you know, well, like town. Luke Bryan and Justin Moore, they've been Cabela, uh, Cabela's Bass Pro Ambassadors, heck for years yeah. and years. I mean, they have been. Chris Jansen. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, we did the Cabela's ACM, uh, archery shoot. A few years in a row I did it. I was able to kind of go down there and guest shoot with them. And I was always on Team Luke. And it was it was so fun to have all of these people from country music come out and shoot archery. Um, and just really openly say to the public, look, I embrace the outdoor lifestyle. I love hunting. I love these traditions. They resonate with me. But, um, you know, that we need that so much across the board. We need people to be bold, to be brave, to do something in, in stand up really for what they believe in. And, and you really do that now. You're hosting NRA Country TV um, or hosted NRA mm -hmm. Country TV in the past. Now you're doing some different things for NRA or with NRA, but that was kind of a big bridge you were gapping through the National Rifle Association. Yeah, the NRA, NRA country was the country music sector and lifestyle is the country music sector sector and lifestyle brand of the National Rifle Association. And I had that I headed that up for a long time. I had a TV show there. It was called On Location. And I'd walk the red carpets at like the CMA Awards. Mm -hmm. And I'd talk to these artists like Luke Bryan. And I'd say like, let's talk about your music. And then like, let's talk about your hunt season. Yeah. And what's your favorite firearm right now? And so we, I would just combine and then I'd come to SHOT Show and I'd talk to you and other, you know, celebrities and public mm -hmm. figures in the outdoor industries that have TV shows and that are um, admired in our field here. And I would talk to them about their hunting season. Yeah. And then, you know, what country artists they've taken hunting and mm -hmm. um, what their favorite song is right now. And so I, I loved doing that um, for a long time. And we were kind of the first to start doing it. There's been other companies that have branched out. Um, and I think that's great. We need more of that. Yes. It's, it's, it's making it, uh, more popular. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. Um, so, so now I'm, I still work with the NRA doing, um, producing and a lot of social media content and creating, um, and stories to just promote, um, our second amendment and our rights mm -hmm. through the NRA. And I'm enjoying that. I've got a few clients that I work with 
doing that, telling telling stories mm-hmm. through branding and marketing. And I've had a really, really good time with that. My own social media has suffered. I don't think I've I don't think I've posted in probably a month. <laughs> Well, when you're, it's, it's literally a full-time job doing social media. And, and for me, I run my own social media and I, when I get to these shows and I get busy, I don't even post on my own social media. I know. I mean, it's because I'm creating other content like this, um, that it's easy to kind of let that fall to the wayside. So I can only imagine doing that professionally for multiple personalities that you kind of let your own go, but you have such an incredible personality yourself and there's a lot of women out there that look up to you immensely. I mean, Morgan also, as a firearms instructor, she's extremely active in uh, the Well-Armed Woman Shooting Chapters, which, what is it rebranded as now? Armed wom- Armed Women of America. Okay. So Morgan is also really active um, with the Well-Armed Shooting Chapters, which is now Armed Women of America. And um, we co-hosted uh, their big convention last year, and, and you've been doing that with them for a number of years. Yeah. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. It started out, um, they hired me just to be the musical entertainment. Oh, and she is good. <laughs> Thanks. Like, I'm not joking. If she doesn't sing uh, Tina Turner <laughs> at least once. <laughs> she gets mad. <laughs> the house is burning down. <laughs> I love some T. Turner. Tina. Big wheels keep on turning. And the primary keep on burning. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what she does. And I would have I would have duetted her, but I would have ruined it. <laughs> no, I love I love doing singing at those events because yeah. you're there and Jen and Arissa are sisters yeah. from Girls with Guns Clothing. They're there. And um The first time I was at that event. She was singing and Jen got on stage and sang a duet with you. And oh my gosh, we're talking Jen from Girls With Guns Clothing. And it was it was the most wonderful thing. Like every woman in that room was out there dancing. And there is a dynamic and a sisterhood that happens at that event. Yeah, um, big time. It is truly incredible because we have women from all walks of life that are there. Women that are... Um, survivors of some kind of domestic uh, abuse or um, assault. Um, You have women that just want to be empowered and, and, you know, learn how to shoot better or learn new skills. And, Mm -hmm. um, and then women that are like totally new firearms owners. Yeah. They don't know what to think. And they're there just to dip a toe and, and they end up submerged up to their eyeballs and, Become gun owners really quickly. Yeah. It's so nice because you're able to go there um, and be around people that are cut from the same cloth. Yes. When sometimes it can feel in in our society, regardless of where you live at this point in time, I feel like it can feel isolating. Like you're the only woman that's taking, you know, your protection seriously. Yeah. And, um, and no one talks about it that much out in public. Yeah. And, and so when you, all the women from the well-armed woman come together, the armed women of America come together. Armed women of America. It's yeah. So they, powerful. It's, it is. And it's, and getting together and just dancing and mm-hmm. singing, that is so uplifting and joyous. Mm-hmm. And then they go off and do seminars and learn more and further their mm-hmm. education. Um, and then we have speakers mm-hmm. come. And so throughout the years, my relationship has evolved with them. And I became uh, a keynote speaker one year and then the MC. And then Christy joined me. Oh, it was so fun. We did it. We co-hosted last year together. We had the best time. It was so fun. Like, I've never done anything like that. So I was a little fish out of the water. So I really was looking at Morgan for um guidance for sure you are definitely like the lead on that whole deal because that was something totally new to me but it's something that you're very accustomed to doing is hosting and I'm seeing like that and that was a whole new world for me and it, I mean it was so much fun because we had the live stage going and then a virtual stage going and Q&A and going back and forth and I think it was really nice for both of us because 
um, we were able to kind of look at the other person like, okay, carry me for a minute as I regain my thoughts. And she would give me a look. I would give her a look. Like, and we would roll with it. And um, it was fun. I think uh, everybody had a great time. And um, this year they're not doing uh, like an individual event. They're going to do three regional events. So I'm not sure you know, how that's all going to shake out. But we're looking, I am looking forward certainly to the 2023 convention. I am too. And I love you. You say you're, you were new to that, but you've been hosting your TV show forever. But that's different. <laughs> that's different than a live event. Yeah. But you completely took those skills and brought them right over the way talking about being a storyteller, you are a storyteller and a creative as well. The way you, when we're in when we were interviewing someone, the way Christy would just get to the heart of the matter, like it, there was hardly any fluff questions. Yeah. Which I'm kind of a no BS kind of gal. Like I, I don't want to talk about the weather. Like I don't, let's, let's cut to the chase. Like yeah. let's talk about real talk. What matters, mm-hmm. how you feel in, you know, your story. Let's mm-hmm. get to people's story. And you're so good at bringing that out in people and telling stories. And I'm just, I admire you. Well, Morgan is a mastermind on social media because that's what she does. So she would go in and like Insta stalk the guests <laughs> and then pull like embarrassing dancing um, moments and bring it to the forefront of everyone's attention. Like, hey, Terry Vaughn, for example, apparently does some interesting dance moves. TikTok. He's a big TikToker with his kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she's like telling it, like put him on total blast about about that. And I mean, we all were laughing. And then, you know, she would put up really cute inspirational memes for the ladies and the way you tied in that social component to that event um it was very impressive and I think it made it it enriched the experience tremendously thank you I don't like to take anything too seriously (laughs) yeah no it's better to have fun especially when you're in a conference you know it's like we gotta have fun Oh, so, that's what everybody's there for. Everybody's totally there for that. But so you have this extensive background into a support. I mean, between NRA, um, tying that with country music, being an instructor. But you also have a very rich background in hunting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've mentioned Girls With Guns, our sisters from over there, Jen O'Hara and Narissa Harmon. And you actually worked with them a lot on their television show, Girls With Guns TV. I did. We met, I don't even know how many years ago it's been now, but I was... Well, your first shot show, their first shot show, and my like second or third shot show is where we met all of us. That's true. I forgot. That's where we all got together. Yes. At that ladies mix and mingle dress up show thing or whatever it was. Yeah. That's true. Right Mm -hmm. across from Yardbird. Yes. That that I don't even know what it's called now but Ugh, it was so long ago yeah I met the girls briefly at um I was helping put on uh, the world turkey hunting championship in K- Lassine Kansas and the girls came and it was a team it was 50 teams it was three uh people per team and two of them showed up and they said that their third girl backed out so they would not be able to hunt but they were still sponsors of the event um and they were the only all female team. Yeah. And um I was helping put on the event. Yeah. But I always have my camo with me. You're like, just I'm always down case. for a hunt. Just <laughs> in case. And so I did. I was like, you know what? You guys, I'm your third. Yeah. You're gonna you've paid this money. You've come all the way here. We're gonna hunt. And we did. And we got out there in the field and we we have so many memories from that one one yeah. time they couldn't find a truck to rent when they got there so they rented a car so like you're going turkey <laughs> hunting in, a, in car. a car in a car just blasting music hopefully the roads the weren't too muddy oh man it was just it was just hilarious and and we were all realized we were cut from the same cloth yeah and um they eventually got their tv show and they asked me to sing the theme song for it and I said, gladly. And at the time, it was Universal Huntress. Mm-hmm. And um, they bounced back and forth. They were on different networks from Outdoor Channel, Sportsman's Channel, Pursuit, Carbon. They've they've kind of done it all. And now it's Girls With Guns TV is, is, is the name of their show. And I guest hosted. They were gracious enough to bring me around the world yeah. hunting and experiencing um, a lot of different cultures. 
And I remember we were in Africa and we were talking about the theme song for the TV show. And um, they said they wanted it to be uh, very worldly. Yeah. Like country music elements, but very worldly because they enjoy hunting all over the world. And I said, I would love to have someone on this song with me. Um, and I'm connected in country music. I, it's not going to hurt to ask. I can ask, you know, and um, Colt, Colt, Jen said Colt Ford. And at the time I'm like, who? What Colt? I ain't joining no Colt. <laughs> like, what? who is this Colt Ford guy? I look him up. He's in Nashville. He's like country rapper. Country rapper. He was a professional golfer on the PGA Tour back That's in the day. That's insane. And he's this like country rapper, um, real big. And I didn't know him at the time, but I came back to Nashville, talked to his people and we had a meeting and he said, I love what you girls are doing. I love the TV show. I would be glad to get on the song with you. And um, what an honor. It was really cool. So Let's Ride was their, uh, my single at the time and their TV show theme song with Colt Ford. So we've had... An so you guys experience. Google this Let's Ride song and listen to it because it's good. And you actually filmed the cutest music video <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's a great video. And it, like everything that you guys are doing have done is. Uh, it's just awesome. Ruger firearms are manufactured with precision and are capable of delivering extremely accurate and repeatable shot placement without spending a lot of money. For example, this Ruger American retails for around $500 and often delivers sub minute of angle accuracy. Precision doesn't have to come with a hefty price tag. Ruger makes precision firearms that all responsible citizens can afford. And that makes me a proud Ruger American. So this year we're looking at planning a girl's trip to Hawaii. Yes. For access deer. And then I, I'm thinking I might hunt wild boar as well. And I'm, we're hoping that you're going to join us because I've just thrown myself into this sisterhood. Like these girls all had it going on. We met, um, like eight years ago and then I've just been like, ah, Hey, you're, I'm coming in. Um, and, and when I loved it, I, I, I love them. And when I signed with Ruger, um, the first year I signed with Ruger, it was so much fun because we were at the NRA convention and, um, Morgan, actually showed up and performed live at the Ruger booth. Yeah. And so we had, it was so fun. We were all dancing, uh, <laughs> Narissa, Jen, and I, and we had all these little girls out there that are excited to, you know, become, you know, future hunters or they mm -hmm. want to participate in shooting sports. Um, and we were all dancing and it was just a really impactful moment I think in my career and my life mm. and um and now we're all practically like seriously inseparable yeah um, which I love I do too it really has become the sisterhood yeah which is so important in our industry it's so important whatever industry you're in just to have that core group of people um that you would trust with your life and yes. that you can bounce ideas off of and um collaborate and just be there for each other personally and mm -hmm. professionally. It's so important. Uh, but our industry in particular, it's so male dominated. Yeah. And that's changing. Um, and, and that's okay. I mean, we've got tons of guy friends yeah, too in this industry. For sure. But it is nice to have this sisterhood in this male dominated, you know, down at, down on the showroom floor. You don't see many women. But when you do, it's just like, you know. Yeah, girl, especially just at cut from the same cloth. And like, yeah, just like you mentioned when we were, I was singing at the Ruger booth and we just didn't care what people thought about us. We were not self-conscious. We were dancing in the aisles. And I hope to God, these little girls that were there, that their parents, you know, they brought probably dad was mom or dad was looking at a gun, you know, and they were thinking, oh, our kids aren't going to love this convention, but they're yeah. coming anyways. And then the kids come and they see these women wacky women that are you know dancing and are professional and are fun and confident and work in this industry mm -hmm. and just like you said like that's impactful I hope that's impactful yeah for them being a role model I think um 
there's a new there's a saying I heard the other day and I'm obsessed with it right now. It's that we don't inherit this land from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Mm. And um you That's know good. what's so important for what we do today is that so our children of this world can have what we have in hopefully in better condition than we have it. And so it's really our job to protect our freedom, to protect our second amendment, mm-hmm. to be stewards of the land, to protect wildlife and conserve and enhance all of those things as much as possible so that yes. so that when they get it it's in a better place than what we found it. And, um, and I love that about everything that you're doing because you're such a great role model, um, for so many people in so many aspects. Thank you. That's, you just nailed it. That's what I think about the work that I do, even just like social media, like with the NRA, for example, I just think of the next generation. Yeah. Every time, regardless of what's going on now, in our world and then the politics and the inner workings. I just think of like the bigger picture that we all need to think about all the time is our next generation, our next generation of hunters, our next generation of, of shooters, our next gener- generation of lawmakers, of yeah. voters, decision makers, decision makers. Yeah. Um, and just trying to like m- keep it, keep it cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's Well, so- and that's what you do is such a great job of making <laughs> conservation politics, second amendment advocacy, you make it cool. Um, because those topics can get a little eye drying for little kids. I mean, younger girls and boys aren't like typically into that sort of thing. But when you make it fun and you make it cool the way you do. Thank you. It catches on. And I think the way a lot of different influencers and organizations are doing that now they're doing the same thing and I love it like turning point USA Mm, super fun which I know you're a part of you're an ambassador for them and I'm such a huge fan of that organization and everything that they do and the podcast and the personalities that come from turning point I just think they have made um it cool to believe you know, the way we do. Yeah. And that's so important for these kids who might be isolated Mm -hmm. in a school environment for, um, you know, being a hunter, uh, being a Christian, having Republican beliefs Mm -hmm. that maybe go against some of what their teachers are even teaching in school. Conservative values. Conservative values. And, um, and they throw these big conventions and parties and, and it's for students. Yeah. And I think that is so cool to see this next generation coming Mm -hmm. and being supported and having other peers and, and having fun and Mm -hmm. standing up for what they believe. And, and they're always so like dressed well and cute and professional. And and I'm like, I just am so motivated by what they're doing. Well, because it's really hard. Even, even Ben Shapiro gives advice to young people like, look, lie your way through college be the person your professors want you to be. And then after college, do what you want and believe what you want. But there is, a, I mean, it is a true thing that uh, having conservative values and outlooks in a lot of universities is um, is penalized through yeah. grades, penalized mm-hmm. through um, performance. And when you're trying to perform well and be at the top of your class, um, that is, that anymore as a conservative has become increasingly more difficult yeah, um, because it doesn't necessarily fit the agenda or the narrative that's being taught in public schools and especially university level colleges. And um, although I don't agree with what Ben says, um, I think that you need to be loud and proud (laughs) um, (laughs) on being conservative. He has a valid point. And, Mm -hmm. um, and, and and I think young adults as a whole really struggle with, um, not being called a terrorist in their own school systems for being a second amendment advocate or not being called a murderer because they're a hunter within their, within their college and university. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm so thankful that we have organizations out there like turning point that are giving those young adults a place to, to grow from a fundamental standpoint and, um, from an ethical standpoint, but also know that they have a home mm-hmm. and that they're, you know, it's okay to, to have the belief system that they have and, and have that support that they need. And, and they have, 
they have uh, chapters across college camp- campuses across you know the country, which you know other students can start chapters and join chapters and then you know have a an outlet to be like, okay, you know I support the Second Amendment. I'm proud of it. I'm not a terrorist. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they get online and they see people like Morgan and the country music artists that you work with and all of the work that you're doing. And it just it just resonates, I think, well with that generation that it's what we're doing is something that we should pr- be proud of. We need to protect our Second Amendment. We need to protect family values and traditions and and that we feel like that's okay. Yeah. And that, I'm sure there's not students and older people listening now that are dealing with this in the workplace. Yeah. Because it, it bleeds over. It doesn't it does. just stop in the universities and school. It bleeds over. And um, it, the struggle is real. The fight is real. Yeah. Um, and I just think, you know, the more, like you said, that we can just, I'm with you in a sense. I think there's strategy yeah. involved. I see what Ben Shapiro is saying. Yeah. I think there's a lot of strategy involved. But at the same time, I think now is the perfect time yeah, to be standing up for what you mm-hmm. believe in and you're not alone. I learned that. I think the world learned that when yeah. Donald Trump became president. I was like, there's no way that's going to happen, regardless of what I wanted to happen or not. I'm like, there's no way because I live in a city. I work in entertainment. So I'm thinking, I know what people believe around me and uh, that's not going to happen. And then all of a sudden, this silent majority popped up out of, I want to say nowhere, but really it was everywhere. Yeah. And I think- A self-censored silent majority. And and, and Mm -hmm. it's not even just self-censored. We are being censored tremendously on Facebook and Instagram Mm -hmm. and YouTube. And Second Amendment advocacy is being flagged. Um, Mm -hmm. Anything to do with firearms is being flagged. Like I shoot for Ruger- and um, our whole motto is firearms for responsible citizens. Um, and that that's what we build firearms for us, for, for safe, responsible citizens to enjoy shooting sports or hunting or, you know, personal protection or whatever it is. But it's for the responsible citizen. And even though we're responsible citizens, we're censored. Mm-hmm. And that censorship is, it's a blanketing. Um, it's like putting a wet blanket on a fire. Yeah. You know, and that's what they're trying to do. That is. And and they're doing it yeah. <laughs> every day. Every day. Big tech is doing it. But um I think the frustration is real and it's never it's it's felt more now than ever. Yeah. And I think people are like we mentioned earlier, Jason Aldean, people are coming out of the woodwork and they're saying, I'm standing up. I'm not backing down. This yeah. is what I believe. And um that sounds so aggressive and forceful, but at the same time I feel like at least me personally um, I'm always on the defense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. His wife and Chuck Wick's wife both were at the turning point event this year. And, um, I think it just lets the younger generation know it's okay. Conservatism is okay. You can be this way. Mm-hmm. You can feel like this. Um, it's an eclectic group of people that are also gathering there. It's not just, you know, oh, all white kids are there. You know, yeah. it's not that way. And that's the same way with the, sec- with the Second Amendment community is we're a community that welcomes everyone. You know, if you believe in marriage and you believe in God and you believe in our Second Amendment and you believe in the Constitution and the freedoms that are unalienable and no man should be able to revoke, then you're a conservative. Uh, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and I think that's... Um, especially for a lot of younger people that are, you know, kind of uncomfortable in their skin or they don't know where or how they fit into this place. Um, I, we do have a welcoming home for that. We do. And I, and I hope it just continues to grow and grow and grow. Yeah. And whatever we can do in our short time here on earth yeah. while we have the spotlight on us. I, I think that that's, that's the great call, you yeah. know, right. That's furthering the mission. Um, I think at the end of the day, we can say we can rest well and said, you know, we've done our job. Yeah. Right. We've, yeah. We've even if it's just a little bit, you don't have to have cameras or be on a platform. You can just do it in your workplace, in your school. Yeah. You know, and um, just being good to people and spreading the light. Yeah. You don't even have to to tell people. That's sometimes it's so funny. People don't know 
that I'll be in a group of people and they have no idea my political standings, whether I am vaccinated or not. They, they could know nothing about me, but because I'm in that group of people, they will assume one way. Yeah. And you know, they'll start talking negatively about the opposite of what they believe. And I just, I just stand there sometimes and I just laugh and I guess I could be boisterous and say, you know, start a fight with them. But like I was talking about strategy earlier, I'm going to be the bigger person. Yeah. I'm going to show you. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to be the light. You're going to find out my beliefs, you know, might not be right now, but you're going to find it out. You just look on my socials or, you know, just have a personal conversation with me. But I just want to leave everybody feeling um, better. And I hope that is an example um, of what I believe. You yeah. know what I mean? I hope people are looking at me. Well, she's, you know, she's conservative and they have a certain way that they think about conservatives, but I didn't make them feel or Christian. Oh, she's Christian. And maybe they had a cert somebody in the church when they were younger made them feel a certain way, but I'm not going to contribute to that. Right. I just want to be a shining light for what all we believe in. And I, and you're, you're doing it as well. And I just think, you know, here at shot show, it can be all business. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I'm excited to get out there today and just be a ball of energy yeah. and be positive and spread the good word. And I know you are too. You've done that all over the world though. I mean, in Africa, um, you and Jenna and Arisa have done a lot with orphanages and schools. Have you not? Yeah, we have. That was our, my first time in Africa. We got off the plane and went immediately to, in Johannesburg, went to, um, their version of Costco right in the city. And we just spent, um, I don't even remember how much money just buying items, toiletries and snacks and candy even yeah. for the kids. Um, and we brought it to these orphanages and just seeing the light on their face. I brought Bibles from my home church in Nashville just to give out. And then we went hunting and, you know, we can't bring the meat back. And it was important to us to have that meat donated yeah. to the orphanages. And these kids lived on that meat yeah. for months and months and months. And that whole aspect that circle of life aspect that really hooked me um, on hunting abroad, especially in Africa. Boots on the ground there. I've spent enough time there to understand it more and what hunting and conservation means in that country and um, more than just what I read on the news. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for my time there learning all of that. Safari Club International has a really great program called the Bell Family Blue blue bag program where people do exactly what you're talking about. They go, they bring items to kids that are in orphanages, orphanages, uh, medical, you know, like if they're in hospital treatment or, um, or in different types of boarding schools and, uh, you bring them supplies that they need medicine, basic medicine. I mean, some kids don't know how to use toothpaste. Yeah. Um, and so they're seeing toothpaste for the first time or a, a hairbrush and, um, it's very rewarding and, and you, you did speak about the meat and one thing that I think is a huge misconception of international hunting, um, especially in your position, um, you know, you've got a, a big personality and all people say, well, she's a trophy hunter and they're murdering animals and da da da. Nothing is wasted on those trips. Like literally, um, <laughs> the bones are ground down for fertilizer and feed for cattle. Um, all of the meat is consumed. The hides are used. There's there's nothing that is left to waste. They use the stomach lining and intestines to create sausages and um, use that as sausage casings. And so uh, there's there's nothing on an animal that's that's wasted there. I mean, everything is 100% utilized. And it's it's a really interesting process. You know, when you look at it from your standpoint is is you're actually like a missionary, you know, um, and what you're doing and, and how you're serving the world is is your church. And um, it's very profound. And I'm really proud to call you a friend. And I think that everything you're doing with making this culture cool and, and then also serving the people that need help the most Um and they're the, I should say that are our most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you take a child in any situation, um, they're they're vulnerable to influence, uh, they're vulnerable to peer pressure, they're vulnerable um, 
in the fact that they're small and they don't mm-hmm. have a lot of decisions to make and they can't do things on their own. And, and in those situations, you're providing food and in in supplies or just being a good mentor and an example. And mm-hmm. um, that's truly like so important today. I think every day, but social media and the bullying and the um, I think the personal issues that a lot of kids have with themselves um, as far as having confidence and stuff, that's that's really tough. Social media has made it tough with all these filters mm-hmm. and everybody looks perfect and, you know, you paint this broad, beautiful, bright picture and some kids just feel like they can't live up to what they see and it's nice to have role models like you out there, like you're wonderfully made by God. Mm, thank you. And you matter. And yeah. Um, yeah. I really that's love, so I love that, that you have that in so much of what you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means everything. It's true. Hey guys, Christy Titus here. Because I don't have the opportunity to get out on the ground to scout some of my non-resident hunting unit draws, I'm at home doing some e-scouting. Using Onyx Hunt lets me prepare for my upcoming hunts this fall right from my computer. And now you have access to 3D features and functions that are found within the app right on your desktop. Using Onyx Hunt to help you e-scout ahead of time means that when you hit the ground this hunting season, you'll have a better lay of the land so you can spend your time hunting and not trying to figure out where to go. If you haven't already, do yourself a favor and download Onyx Hunt and try it today. And, and the interesting thing is you're talking about, yeah, I was picturing as you were talking kids in Africa that they were like kind of yelling at me and I didn't understand what they were saying. And I asked our guide, what are they saying there? And he said, they're asking for your water bottle. I had an empty, I had empty water bottles and they just want bottles because it's, something that they can fill up and carry and they can have water with them. And I'm like the one staple, like we need water and oxygen, you know what I mean? Like to live. Yeah. And these kids are just like asking the thing that we throw away to live. And we had them all in the bottom of the floor and I just start tossing water bottles out. (laughs) They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm giving them water bottles and you can't say anything about it. (laughs) You know, but you just want to help and there's so much help that needs to be done there. But even domestically, I don't have kids, but I have an eight year old nephew now and my brother, he doesn't hunt and, and my nephew's mom, um, never was in the outdoors at all. And so I never wanted to push it on him, Yeah, but I did want to educate him, um, on just all the things that, that I believe and just be a little role model mm-hmm. for him. And that's been so fun to watch him grow and um, into learning about conservation. Yeah. And I took him on a hunt um, a couple years ago. He didn't shoot. He wasn't ready to shoot, but he was on his first deer hunt. And, and me, my fiance, and my nephew, and my fiance actually shot um, the doe. But he was a part of the whole process. And... Um, it was just so amazing to watch his eyes mm-hmm. and how he, and I was nervous. I don't have kids and our, your listeners are probably chuckling at this because I think anybody that takes their kid hunting for the first time is so worried because it can go like one of two ways, you know, like they can be, I love this or I hate this. Yeah. Like crying and traumatized. Yeah. Or completely obsessed with it and wanting to know more about, yeah. okay, you know, the entry and the exit wound and they're, they want to know more about touching the animals hide and, and, um, to watch him, it's all how you react to, yeah. which I don't have kids. So I was like, Jesus, take the wheel. Like, <laughs> let me do the right thing here. <laughs> um, and we were just educating him the whole time throughout the whole process and, t- and to watch him just absorb and learn, um, was such a gift yeah and it made me I was like okay now I might consider having kids <laughs> just to further you can do it for this. the you and Jen can be the tribe leaders of that department <laughs> Jen's pregnant baby number two right now we're so excited to welcome that new baby into our family and yeah. um it's such an exciting time for everything that we're doing and 
thank God we're here having shows after not having this type of fellowship for over a year. Um, the it's world's true. been on such lockdown. So it's it's nice to be back in action and, and feeling like you're actually, you know, you're making those network connections because being face-to-face is so valuable. There's a lot that happens in this type of environment that you just can't do over Zoom. No. And with this um, <clears throat> COVID surge that has been happening. Yeah. Um, it's been hard cause it's like, we got so excited. Okay. We're here. We are 2022. We're going to have all of our shows again from ATA to shot show to NRA annual meeting, SCI, yeah. you know, there's just NWTF. There's so many that we get to, you know, see our friends and, and network. And event- I thought it wasn't going to happen. Shot show wasn't going to happen because of the surge, but I love their stance on it. Shot show all in. Yeah. Um, and there have been some companies and people, a lot of that have chosen not to be here. Yeah. But there's some that are here and I'm just so grateful. I'm not like upset that some have backed out. I'm not, um, I'm not like, I don't feel any other way besides mm-hmm. like grateful to be here. Mm-hmm. And I just hope that we are able to keep having these shows yeah. moving forward and that these shows just keep growing. It's so important for our industry, for, like you said, our relationships. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Yeah, I think there's a lot of value that comes from being here. But I also understand the standpoint of some companies that that have made the decision, um, you know, to to look after their production lines and their staff and and the health of those people. Um, It's so hard. Publicly traded companies, companies that, um, you know, are based in other countries when they're locking down borders again. It's so hard. That's what I'm saying. You have to have grace for, for all the companies and all the individuals, regardless of their decisions. We're all in this together. That's right. And whether they're present or not, you know, we understand and we're all working through it and making the best of it and, Excited to get out there on the showroom floor and take it all in. Today's first day. Day one. Day one. So we're actually meeting before. This is a very early morning podcast. Bless your heart for being <laughs> here. I love you for it. How Thanks. can people find you, follow you? Um, I mean, there's so much. I, I would, we would, we could talk for an hour about hunting stories and um, and favorite memories. And, but h- how do people follow you like every day so they can look back at where you've been and then stay with you as you move forward? Yeah. I'm most active on my Instagram, which okay. is Morgan Mills Music. And it's got the blue check mark. I only say that because there's like 10 other ones now and can't figure out how to get those accounts taken down, which is so weird that people do that. Uh, yeah, it's so, so odd. So weird. And then they're like... Uh, yeah, you are randomly selected for winning this thing. Just send me your credit card number and da da. da. And I have I had that happen to me not too long ago. Was about, oh. Yeah, wasn't so, me. <laughs> struggle is real there. So Morgan Mills music on. Um, you can find my music on all the streaming platforms like Spotify and um, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, um, and uh, my website morganmills dot com. But I'm most active on my Instagram stories. Yeah. So yeah. her stories are awesome. She has chickens. I do. And it's hilarious. She is truly the mother hen. Okay. I live in Nashville. Tell them your chickens' names. Yes. I live in Nashville and my chicken coop is the Grand Ole Poultry House mm-hmm. after the Grand Ole Opry House. And um, I've got Reba Peckentire, Eggie Lou Harris, Patsy Cluck, Dolly Part Hen. Um, who have I missed? I don't know. Tanya Clucker. Seriously, <laughs> this woman is amazing to follow. Did I say Loretta Hinn? She's in there, <laughs> like Loretta Lynn. Lynn, but Hinn. All my all my chickens have classic country icon names. names. I had a rooster in the mix um, recently, and he was Conway Tweedy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so we have fun on there. Come, come, yes, come follow. Please follow her on social media online. Uh, Check out what she's doing through NRA and all of that. It's so much. um, So if people want to watch your content through NRA, where do they, where do they consume that? Well, right now I am just producing content, social media. So follow NRA on social media. All their social. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy to find. Lovely to follow. Miss Morgan Mills, you are one of my 
dearest friends, and I'm so thankful and honored for you to take time out of your busy schedule this week and join us for this episode of the Wild Nine Cup podcast. I thank you all for being along on this ride through country music and our Second Amendment and hunting with Miss Morgan, and I hope you all enjoyed the ride. Thank you. Love you. Love you, too. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.